Hi, welcome to Tashida's Lit Lounge, where literacy is lit. And today we are going to read The Real Slam Dunk. The Real Slam Dunk was written by Sharice K. Richardson and illustrated by Kadir Nelson. So Sharice Richardson wrote the words and Kadir Nelson drew the pictures. Before we begin, I am going to point out that this book has lots of hyphenated compound words. Hyphenated compound words. Those are words that come together. And when they join together, they are joined together by a hyphen. And that hyphen says that you need to say those two words as one word so you would say it best for example we have half eaten if something is half eaten it's half eaten not half eaten then you have yo 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 you a yo yo is a toy when you play with a yo yo it goes out and comes back in it's a yo-yo, not yo, yo. So this word is joined with a hyphen and it says yo-yo. And then another word that I chose from one of these chapters is glow in the dark. You don't say glow in the dark, you say glow in the dark. So I always say when you see hyphenated words, just say it fast and it adds new meaning. Okay, so, the real slam dunk. The real slam dunk. Chapter one. Boom! The front door slammed so hard the house shook. Oops! Marcus whispered, freezing in his tracks. Marcus Trey Robinson, his mother yelled. Hi, Mom. Sorry about the door, he said. He wished he could remember that his mother hated when he slammed the door. It's just that tomorrow is the big day. For what? His mom asked. The field trip. Mia, Marcus's twin sister, blurted as she rushed into the kitchen. She had a round face with bushy eyebrows, just like Marcus. She plopped her backpack on the kitchen table. Tomorrow, we go to Giants practice day, Marcus reminded his mother. A smile blossomed on her face. Oh, that's right, you get to meet what's his name, his mom said jokingly. Mom, his name is Jason Carter. You know, Jason Carter. Marcus stretched the name out like the announcers on TV did. Everybody knows who Jason Carter is, Mia said as she grabbed the glue and scissors from a drawer. Then she sat down at the table and began cutting out pictures of basketball from a magazine. She was going to paste the basketballs next to the story about Jason Carter she was writing for her newspaper. Mia's newspaper was really just a poster board filled with pictures and stories she made up and typed on the computer. She kept telling Marcus that one day it would be as big as the City News Times. That was the newspaper their parents read. I know who Jason Carter is, their mom said with a laugh. How could I forget? Marcus's room breathed, Jason Carter. Basketball posters of him were tacked up all over his walls. If he got any more, he would have to paste them to the ceiling. You know your father wishes he were in your class. He wants to go on the field trip too, she told them. Marcus was too excited to stand still. He did an air dribble. Then he turned and stretched his arms high above his head as he leaped toward the refrigerator. His mom screamed. Marcus Robinson hits the winning basket. Mom, I was in the middle of my shot, he groaned. You made me miss it. 
Even Jason Carter misses baskets, his mom said with a laugh. Marcus pointed at the front of his Jason Carter jersey. Number 14 hardly ever misses, he said. Are you wearing that smelly shirt again tomorrow? Mia asked. She fanned her hand up and down in front of her nose. Of course I am, Marcus said. His Jason Carter jersey was his favorite. It had been too big when he got it a few years ago. Now it was almost too small, but he loved it so much. He wouldn't give it up. His mom usually didn't let him wear it two days in a row since they were going on the field trip. He hoped she would say it was okay. Marcus crossed his fingers behind his back and looked up at his mother. Please say yes, he begged silently. If you wash it, you can wear it tomorrow, his mom said. Yes, Marcus yelled. Then he hunched back over and began air dribbling again. Make this your last shot, his mom said. It's time to do homework. Marcus stood straight up and sighed. Oh, mom, homework is such a waste of time, he said. It wasn't that school was hard. Marcus secretly loved math. He just didn't think he'd ever use what he learned in school. He was only 10, but he already had his mind made up. He was going to be a famous basketball player one day, just like Jason Carter. You can't bounce your way into college, his mom said. But mom, I know I'm good, he said. I'm the best. That's why I was named most valuable player for our team last season. Okay, hot shot, she said. One more shot, then dribble your way to the kitchen table to do your homework until your dad gets home. Marcus prepared to make a slam dunk. He quietly lifted his arms in the air and aimed for the top of the re refrigerator. Mia walked past him and grabbed a frozen strawberry juice bar from the freezer. Her eyes met the hair on top of his bushy head. Marcus had refused to get a haircut for the last four weeks. He thought he would look taller if he let his hair grow, but it wasn't working. Mia was still almost an inch taller. Marcus walked to the table and unzipped his backpack. He noticed lying on the table, there was a picture of Jason Carter that Mia had clipped from a magazine. Marcus picked up the picture and stared at Jason. Everyone had signed the ba basketball we're giving to Jason. Mia told Marcus between slurps. Now, all I need is the tape recorder so I won't miss anything, Jason says. She wanted to write a story about what Jason was going to tell them. The tape recorder would help her remember exactly what he said. Marcus put the picture back on the table. Then he pulled a notebook from his backpack. Don't forget, I'm the one who gets to ask Jason the questions, he said. Marcus wondered if Jason would find out Mia was his twin, especially since she was a smidgen taller than he was. He thought that that would be too embarrassing. Maybe if he stayed far away from her, Jason would never notice. Just as Marcus sat down, his father opened the front door. Hey, Dad! Marcus shouted, jumping up and running to meet him. Guess what I'm going to ask Jason Carter tomorrow? You can tell me we, when we get in the car, his dad said, patting the top of Ma Marcus's head. We're off to the barber shop. Marcus sighed. Do I have to get a haircut? You sure do, his father said. Marcus's mom kissed his dad hello. Then she looked at his hair. You could use a haircut too, she told her husband. But hurry back, Marcus still has homework to do. And that is the end of chapter one for the real slam dunk. See you soon for chapter two. And if you have the book or when you get this book, you can look for the first hyphenated compound word because there was one in here. See you soon.